50. A greatness in thy daughter's soul resides. A greatness in thy daughter's soul resides that can transform herself and all around, but must cross on stones of suffering to its goal. Although designed like a nectar cup of heaven, of heavenly ether made, she sought this air. She too must share the human need of grief and all her cause of joy transmute to pain. All here can change if the magician choose. If human will could be made one with God's, if human thought could echo the thoughts of God, man might be all-knowing and omnipotent. O oh man, the events that meet thee on thy road, though they smite thy body and soul with joy and grief, are not thy fate. They touch thee a while and pass. Even death can cut not short thy spirit's walk. Thy goal, the road thou choosest, are thy fate. On the altar, throwing thy thoughts, thy heart, thy works. Thy fate is a long sacrifice to the gods, till they have opened to thee thy secret self and made thee one with the indwelling God. O soul, Intruder in nature's ignorance, armed traveler to the unseen supernal heights, thy spirit's fate is a battle and ceaseless march against invisible opponent powers. A passage from matter into timeless self. Adventurer through blind, unforeseeing time, a forced advance through a long line of lives, it pushes its spearhead through the centuries. Across the dust and mire of the earthly plain, on many guarded lines and dangerous fronts, in dire assaults, in wounded slow retreats, or holding the ideal's battered fort, or fighting against odds in lonely posts, or camped in night around the bivouac's fires, awaiting the tardy trumpets of the dawn, in hunger and in plenty and in pain, through peril and through triumph and through fall, through life's green lanes and over her desert sands, up the bald moor, along the sunlit ridge, in serried columns with a straggling rear, led by its nomad vanguard's signal fires, marches the army of the way-lost God. And then, late, the joy ineffable is felt. Then he remembers his forgotten self. He has refound the skies from which he fell. At length, his front's indomitable line forces the last passes of the ignorance. Advancing beyond nature's last known bounds, reconnoitering the formidable unknown, beyond the landmarks, beyond the landmarks of things visible, it mounts 
through a miraculous upper air, till climbing the mute summit of the world, he stands upon the splendor peaks of God. In vain thou mournst that Satyavan must die. His death is the beginning of greater life. Death is the spirit's opportunity. A vast intention has brought the souls close, and love and death conspire towards one great end. For out of danger and pain, heaven bliss shall come. Time's unforeseeing event, God's secret plan. This world was not built with random bricks of chance. A blind God is not destiny's architect. A conscious power has drawn the plan of life. There is a meaning in each curve and line. It is an architecture high and grand. By many named and nameless masons built, in which unseeing hands obey the unseen, and of its master builders she is one. <laughs>